I welcome you all on the afternoon session that are round tables focusing on the groups of children with, uh, on the periphery and this particular group uh, will focus on the rights of children with uh, disabilities. Before introducing uh, uh, the speakers of this uh, panel, please uh, let me very briefly just introduce uh, the problem that uh, we are dealing with. So the rights of uh, children with uh, disabilities have the same uh, rights as their healthy counterparts. It's uh, absolute uh, evidence for 35 years in the human rights protection. But is it a reality? Today we have, uh, according to the data of the UNICEF, 240 million children who are counted, so this is what we see, who live with some kind of disability. And just let me refer to some data. Children with disability are more likely to experience abuse than their healthy peers, are 25% less likely to attend early childhood education, 49% more likely to have never attended school, 47% more likely to be out of primary school, 33% more likely to be out of lower secondary school, they are more likely to experience multidimensional poverty and face significantly poor health outcomes. So in general, in conclusion, we can say that the childhood of children with disabilities are more endangered than those of uh, their healthy counterparts. And uh, actually what we would like to focus on in this round table, it's two dimension. Firstly, that we need a child rights based approach towards children with disabilities. And the other is that uh, disability is more of a social construct than the real uh, ability and uh, the real condition of the given person. I'm very, very happy and very honored that you all uh, accepted our invitation and uh, we have uh, experts really from uh, different fields and who really deal with this topic for a long time. Let me uh, introduce uh, each one of them. Firstly, uh, we welcome Dr. Jasna Murgel. She's a district judge at the Family Law Department at, and the president of the Maribor District Court. She holds a PhD in international law and she's an assistant professor at the Doba Faculty of Applied Business and Social Studies Maribor. In the period of 2014 and 2018, she was a deputy of National Assembly of Republic of Slovenia. As a member of the parliament, she was the main supporter of the act regulating the integrated early intervention for preschool children and special needs adopted in 2017. Since 2021, she has been, sorry, the president of the Association of Cerebral, Cerebral Fabri Societies of Slovenia. Yes, sorry, you will uh, uh, correct me if I was wrong. We have Professor Dr. Nora Jakab. She is a, a full professor of the University of Miskolc and a senior researcher at the Ferenc Madl Institute for uh, Comparative Law. She is a member of the Center of Doctoral Studies on Disability at the university and uh, she deals uh, with labor law. She has an extensive expertise uh, in the field of disability rights and uh, uh, she was part of the Polish-Hungarian research platform which dealt with the uh, rights of uh, children with disabilities. So it was a really recent topic that uh, she dealt with. Professor Błażej Kmieciak from Poland, uh, an associate professor of the Department of Medical uh, Law in the Medical University of Łódź. She has a, uh, he has, sorry, a habilitation degree in legal science, a doctorate in psychology, law and medicine, and a master's degree in social rehabilitation. He is a mediator and a psych uh, certified psychoeducator. He has really extensive uh, expertise. For eight years, he served as an ombudsman for patients' rights at the psychiatric hospital and as an advisor of bioethical issues to the ombudsman for patients' rights. <coughs> And for several years, he also managed the bioethics department of the Biotechnological Peel website. 
He's a member of the State Commission for Counteracting Sexual Abuse of Minors Under 15 Years Age and the Chairman of the Science Council of the Academic of Bioethics of the One of Us of Foundation. He is himself, uh, if you allow me to yes, share this, a person with a visual disability. He was uh, born uh, blind and he was blind until the age of five and uh, he's now visually impaired so I think he can bring uh, this. Some, yeah, 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 and what's very important, uh, mm, this participation that I think in this respect is very important. And uh, last but not least, yeah. Professor uh, Wojciech Lis, the professor of uh, Catholic University of Lublin and the director of the Department on Family Science. Uh, his interest is family law, human rights law, medical law, questions of bioethics. He deals with patients' rights and he has also participated uh, in the Polish-Hungarian research platform on the rights of uh, children with disabilities. I myself, uh, I'm Marta Benius, uh, I'm the president of the Association of Children's Rights and also uh, I work at the Ferenc Madel Institute for Comparative Law, so I welcome you all. And let's dig into the topic. Okay. All right, so we, we started with some international data. We said that there are 240 million uh, children with disabilities in the world. So uh, these data shows uh, the number of children, so human beings uh, living with some impairment under, under, uh, under 18. I was wondering whether you can give some reflections from your own country, whether you have an aggregated data collection for the age group under 18. If yes, what are the numbers? What they show to you? So I think we can just make a round regarding this question. So, <clears throat> thank you. Yes, I can uh, speak about Slovenia. Uh, well, uh, um, in Slovenia we don't uh, have uh, aggregated uh, data. There are only some estimations. If st there are statistical data about the uh, pupils with special needs. Uh, otherwise, uh, if I may uh, share some data, it's, uh, in Slovenia there are two, approximately two million inhabitants and uh, out of it uh, there are 350,000 uh, children. This means uh, persons up to 15, uh, 18 years age and um, there is uh, uh, an estimate 10 to 15 uh, percent of children with the special needs uh, among this population two uh, 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 three to two percent uh, of, of those children uh, are children with intellectual disability and two uh, up to two percent uh, are uh, children with uh, physical uh, uh, disability uh, uh, including cerebral cerebral palsy uh, so uh, we have statistical data on uh, pupils so in primary school uh, in in, uh, in, the, in this school year there are pupils pupils with special needs, uh, approximately 18,000 uh, of them, uh, and, uh, um, and all of the pupils in, uh, in, in, in uh, there is approximately uh, 200,000 pupils in Slovenia. Uh, in regular education pro program, uh, there are approximately 15,000 and uh, approximately 3,000 in, in special uh, adopted uh, educational programs. Uh, there is no uh, strategy in uh, children uh, with uh, on children with special needs. Uh, there is even no, even no strategy on uh, persons uh, with the disability at all, uh, and uh, this would uh, definitely be needed uh, in our country. And uh, also, uh, we we, we ha do have ombudsman uh, for human rights, uh, but uh, he, and although uh, uh, the ombudsman uh, fo focuses also on the rights of, of children and, chil and children with special needs, but we don't have in Slovenia there is no uh, ombudsman for. Um, uh, children or advocate for uh, for the principle or, or equality. Uh, we, we do have uh, th this institution, but not especially for for children or uh, with, for children with special needs. Thank you so much. How is it uh, in Poland? Can you? We have two experts from Poland, so I will ask them to share the responsibility of 
telling about uh, disaggregated data, the update of this data, about the role of national human rights institutions, and whether there is a comprehensive strategy on children's rights, okay? Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, we also have uh, some uh, registration. Uh, in Poland, uh, data on people with uh, disabilities are collected uh, by the Central Statistical uh, Office through population uh, census uh, and reports on the state of uh, employment. Uh, according to official data, the number of disabled uh, people in Poland uh, is almost 4 million, uh, but the actual number uh, is between 5 uh, and uh, 7.5 uh, million, uh, which is approximately 12% of country's uh, population. Uh, the number of children um, with disabilities is approximately uh, 300,000 uh, out of almost 7 million uh, children aged in uh, between uh, 0 and uh, 17. The number um, is estimated uh, to be higher uh, as these uh, 300,000 uh, only include children with an official disability certificate. Uh, the act of, uh, uh, on vocational and social rehabilitation and the uh, employment um, of persons with disabilities introduced uh, a formal uh, understanding of uh, disability, which requires it to be confirmed uh, by a relevant authority, uh, without which a uh, person who is uh, actually uh, disabled uh, cannot be recognized as such uh, uh, as a, a disabled uh, person under, uh, under the law. Uh, we have uh, something like a strategy, uh, strategy for persons with uh, disabilities, 2021-2030, adopted uh, by a resolution uh, of uh, a Council of uh, Ministers uh, in uh, 2021. Uh, this, uh, this resolution, this uh, strategy is based on uh, eight pillars. Uh, and uh, the action included uh, under these uh, areas, uh, under these pillars, uh, form the basis for the preparation of uh, a comprehensive policy of uh, persons with uh, disabilities in uh, Poland. We have also uh, the government uh, planning potentially uh, for the disabled people uh, uh, who is responsible for the uh, implementation uh, of uh, this uh, strategy. Only two words uh, to, to this, what my friend said. Well, uh, if we think about disability, we, uh, like, like Dr. Marta said, I was the ombudsman for the patients in psychiatric hospital, and we often forget that people with mental uh, disorder, disability, uh, mental illness also, are actually also people temporarily, but also not temporarily, with disability, because they cannot do the thing that we, we mostly do when we in... Uh, uh, elementary stage. So uh, w I would like to also tell you that in Poland, the analysts from the Ministry of Health are showing us perspective that 25% of Polish society, in fact also the children, has a problem, mental problems. And uh, after the COVID-19, there are lots of problems with, with problems with, for, for instance, suicide behaviors. And I know that this is not strictly the, the, the disability, but if we analyze the actions, behaviors of young people, we see lots of people, lots of young people inside of the houses, inside of the rooms, flats, and they don't walk to, to other people. And, and I would like to tell also about this group of people with social disability, disability because this is psychosocial form of disability, and the Convention of People with Disability uh, is talking also about this group of people.
Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the reflection on uh, on Poland. Maybe just to add one question. I know that uh, the act uh, on uh, ombudsman uh, on children's rights covers the rights of uh, children with disabilities in Poland. Could you just in two sentences say whether there are special roles or uh, whether it is an effective job that can be done through this institution or it can be improved? We are just interested because uh, as, uh, in Hungary and uh, as I understood in Slovenia, we don't have a, a particular role. So as you are the only country where it exists, I was wondering whether any of you can... Uh... Well, I can tell you about the role of the Ombudsman for the, for the children. Uh, it's okay, it's not mine. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, and I know lots of actions, uh, this Ombudsman and uh, the Ombudsman before of him, for the, for the children with disability. Is this effective, effective uh, actions? In my opinion, no, because we still. Uh, I I will tell about this with the problem of abuse with ch children. So I, I I don't tell about this. Uh, I, I I can tell you that I think that we still don't see the problems of children with disabilities. For instance, the problem with children inside of the special educations. The problem that. I know that this is the integration, the problem of integration, the case of integration is very good and, uh, and uh, great respect for young people. The young lady from, uh, from the round table, we heard about her reflection of relationship with her mother that was working with, with children with disability. But I believe that we still in Poland have no... Um, we cannot talk, we, we don't know how to talk about the people with disability. We're starting to talk with them. With them. We, start, we started lots of years ago to, to talk with them. For instance, during that kind of conference uh, in Poland, we see the movement of self-advocates. It's a great movement of people with disability that they can talk about only, uh, they are talking about their rights. We can hear they, them, them voices. Thank you so much. Maybe Professor Nora Jakab, you can give us some reflections on... Yes, Hungary. but uh, I have heard so many interesting things yes. from my <laughs> colleagues. Uh, can I have a question first? Of course. Because, uh, <laughs> That's how we bomb, you, uh, bomb the know. round table. <laughs> I was joking, of course. I am this the worst. <laughs> <laughs> because um, you said that they are uh, in, uh, not invisible. So it means that you can also hear the voice of uh, parents uh, with disabled children as well. And uh, are they effective, as effective as... Well, there, there was a conflict situation, for instance, in the Polish parliament. The parents uh, of, of children with disability uh, were inside of the parliament and they were f fighting for the rights of the parents of the children with disability. Because, for instance, there is a problem. I, I, I will confess to you with one thing. My younger sister, she is a young, great lady with, with dis mental disorder and mental intellectual disability. And my mom, great person, she told me everything about the, about the love, about the people with disability. She was working for the several years in a special hospital for the people with deep, deep uh, intellectual uh, disorder. My sister, like I told you, is also in that that situation. My my mom cannot work, and she gets not too many money from 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 our government, uh, and she cannot work because she needs to be with my sister. And for instance, this is in fact in Polish law, her actions, her great actions, are not in fact uh, are not formal work. And she cannot go to retire because she was working with, she was standing in front of, of, of uh, my, my sister. Uh, so I think that we still don't, don't hear the voice of, of parents with, that have children with disability. I, I, am, I know that I am critical, uh, but I was ombudsman and this inside of my blood. <laughs> so this is... Yes. No, 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 that we are here to be a little bit critical. <laughs> All right.
Yes, uh, you are the most authentic in this group, I think. Yes. <laughs> um, in Hungary, um, if we look at the numbers, um, according to the latest census, we can say that under age of 14, uh, we have got 23,000 disabled children in Hungary. And it is interesting uh, in this data that uh, it's not under the age of 18, that it's under the age of 14. And according to the UN Convention, when we talk about the protection of disabled children, then it is under the age of 18. So we have got this differentiation in the census. And unfortunately, because we were talking with Marta about this, and Marta is also part of the Hungarian-Polish uh, research platform, so we were talking with <clears throat> Marta about uh, the strategy, because I could see that there are some strategies, but um, she just strengthened uh, in me that it's not working. If we have got another uh, strategy uh, regarding the uh, fight against the social exclusion, then it has a different focus. So the problem in Hungary is that disabled children are really invisible. And I hope that I'm also good for the translation. Yes. No. I'm trying, yeah, not to be too, <laughs> too fast. Thank you so much for your reflections. And uh, yeah, what you said at the end, I think it's very important to look at children with disabilities through their childhood and with the glasses of children's rights. I really like this picture. It will come up again and again. And not uh, through the through their disability. But uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, after, uh, after some general information, we will focus on the child rights-based approach. And uh, what is actually a child rights-based approach? So in international human rights law, we have two big conventions, the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities that uh, deal with children with disabilities that give the human uh, rights uh, background and if we talk about uh, a child rights based approach there are the principles of the CRC that can be invoked here and why I will now turn to Judge Murgel uh, to please reflect Murgel or how, how Murgel now you will, you will correct me because I think it's very important to tell each one of your names the the correct way at least try um, so please reflect on the importance of the CRPD in terms of children with disabilities. And afterwards, please tell us a bit about your work, uh, what you do uh, in the field of uh, inclusive education for children with special needs. Yes, thank you. My, my uh, last name is Murgel, so it's, uh, you have pronounced it perfectly. Uh, well, uh, firstly, I would like to uh, uh, confess, as you said, I'm, I'm all, I'm, I, I was a parent of a, of a child with special needs. My daughter uh, had a cere severe uh, cerebral palsy, so this is, was the reason why I started uh, um, dealing with, with the protection of persons with disabilities. And uh, this is why I'm f also familiar with the uh, with, uh, challenges uh, parents of uh, children with special needs uh, face, and also why I uh, was uh, in in involved with uh, uh, the adoption of, of the law on early treatment of preschool children in Slovenia. Uh, well, uh, was, as, well, as I was listening to the debate uh, uh, on the roundtable, which happened before uh, our roundtable here, uh, I, I, the, the, the thought came to my mind that uh, it would be uh, a very um, important to stress uh, that uh, uh, International Convention on uh, the Rights of Persons with Disability uh, imposes uh, an obligation on the states uh, to raise aware awareness of the rights uh, of uh, the persons with them. Um, uh, disabilities. This is something we uh, um, states mostly um, forget uh, or do not pay much attention to. Uh, um, for instance, in Slovenia, we still don't have this strategy. Uh, we are non-governmental organizations are, are, are um, striving to that, that, that this happen, but uh, it, this still hasn't happened in Slovenia. But uh, actually, uh, I believe 
believe uh, each of your country is a member state of the of the uh, of a contractual party of the of the convention, and uh, this um, is is really necessary for the states to 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 start working more seriously on the on on this field because uh, society uh, is is still not uh, aware as it should be on the rights of of persons with the, uh, with disabilities, and this is the duty of the state. It is not duty of, uh, uh, of uh, um, um, uh, individuals. Uh, it is especially the duty of the state to raise awareness. And if you read the Article 8 of the Convention, you can see that the, st the state uh, parties uh, should raise awareness through, throughout society, including the family level, regarding persons with disabilities uh, and, do fo and foster respect for the rights and dignity of persons and disabilities and uh, to promote positive perceptions and greater social awareness and so on and so forth. So it is a duty of the state. I, 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 I think it's necessary uh, to uh, stress this uh, each time we have an opportunity to do that because uh, if the society would be more aware of the rights of persons with, with the disabilities, then uh, it would reflect, uh, it would uh, you know, be the, the shift in our minds would happen because we would then be uh, children and, and the whole society, when we raise children, if we teach them that way, that uh, um, persons with disabilities have human rights, it's not something we just the rest of us give to them as, as you know, uh, uh, an act of goodwill. Uh, but it is, those are the rights that are written in the convention which uh, uh, um, determines the rights of, and those are human rights. And if the society as a whole is aware of that, then we could uh, talk about a mo model of disability, which is a social model, which, which basically means that the society has to adapt to the persons of, with disabilities. And we, we wouldn't uh, have uh, persons with disabilities somewhere in special institutions that we have to, you know, we would, uh, um, the society would be more prepared to, to uh, accept them and to uh, adapt to, to them. So that, uh, so the young, young people who were speaking about this today, uh, the, this topic, you know, uh, they saw somewhere, they had a special opportunity to see persons with disabilities. Well, um, the, the intention of the convention is uh, uh, to, to, to uh, you know, include uh, fully persons with disabilities and also uh, children with, uh, with uh, um, disabilities or, or children with special needs. One of the uh, international instruments you mentioned is the, uh, the first uh, that mentions children with uh, disability, disabilities is the Convention on, on, on the Rights of Children in, in uh, Article 23. Uh, I'm sure you all have uh, read this article. I won't read it, but it, it uh, uh, um, states parties are obliged to recognize mentally or physically disabled child should enjoy a full uh, and decent life and also should have uh, uh, a special care. And this convention is from uh, 1992, but uh, uh, the modern convention that uh, um, uh, encompasses the right of uh, persons with disabilities and also applies uh, uh, for children is the convention on the, person, on, persons, on the persons with disabilities and it has a special uh, article uh, dedicated to children with, special, with disabilities uh, and according to this article st states parties uh, must take necessary measures to ensure the full enjoy enjoyment uh, by children uh, with disabilities of all human rights and fundamental freedoms and so on and so forth. So a special uh, um, article is dedicated to children uh, with disabilities. Why am I, uh, this convention is uh, very important. This is a new, the newest convention on, on uh, human rights uh, within, in the framework of the United Nations and, and is based on the modern principle of uh, uh, disability, on the principle that uh, society should uh, uh, adapt itself to the needs, uh, should, uh, should uh, eliminate uh, the barriers uh, to include the persons with disabilities into it, and that the persons with disabilities have human rights. Those are not 
those are human rights, just as rights of any other person. And this is what all of us uh, should uh, uh, accept uh, and uh, uh, also uh, teach our children, all, all of our ch children about that so that we could build a, a more inclusive society. And the Convention on the, human, on the Rights of the Persons with Disabilities is intended exactly uh, to do. Uh, that uh, one of the articles uh, which is really uh, important of the Convention of uh, uh, um, of the, um, on the on the persons with uh, disabilities, uh, and and it also uh, applies for for children. All all of the articles of the Convention also uh, of this Convention apply for the children. And I would uh, like to uh, stress is the article um, on education, Ar Article 24, according to which uh, the state. Uh, uh, the state, uh, persons with disabilities, the state uh, must ensure that persons with disabilities are not excluded from the general education system uh, on the basis of disability and that children with disabilities are not excluded from the free and compulsory primary education from secondary education on the basis of disability. So there is a special, art, special article uh, in this convention on the rights of minority of, of minorities, sorry, uh, on, of uh, of uh, this, uh, the per persons with disabilities, uh, which relates to um, education, and uh, now the question is: We all in our countries have some uh, some models of uh, inclusion of children with. Uh, in Slovenia, we, 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 the term we use is children with special needs, but it's uh, pretty much uh, all the same. Uh, the question is whether in, in our system we really do have inclusive uh, um, um, education. And this is a field uh, on which uh, the, the, the organization, the Association for Cerebral Palsy in Slovenia, I am the president of now, um, has started, I mean, has, has been uh, um, initiating the debate uh, um, uh, about it, it is uh, whether there should be one school for all. There are some models in, in, in some uh, uh, countries. We, we organized um, a conference on that on that topic. We have in Slovenia regular schools in which uh, some children with special needs are uh, included. They, they they can participate in schooling, and there are also some spe special schools, special institu institutions where. Uh, children ba uh, with special needs uh, are basically separated from the, from the society. So, uh, uh, in, and the, this uh, association, association, which I'm president of, started a, de a debate whether also in Slovenia there could be a model, uh, there could be only one school where uh, Basically, if we, if, if, if there would be an option to uh, um, to uh, uh, have only only one school without a special schools in Slovenia, this is a long debate. Uh, there are pro, uh, pros and con contrasts, but um, there are uh, some countries that have introduced such a model, and there are some schools. There are some examples uh, in uh, uh, in, for instance, in Portugal. Also, Italy uh, has had some experience. Uh, they abandoned special schools, uh, and uh, uh, that meaning that uh, we would not all, not all the children would be in the same class. They wouldn't uh, uh, be take part in the uh, education in the educational process in the same way. But they could be in the same school. They could they could uh, have separate separate uh, uh, classrooms, but they could uh, eat together. They could play together. They could have performances or whatever. They could be together in the same place. So then this this person, this child with disability wouldn't be, be something awkward, something you don't usually see. And that this would be something, something you, that happens every day and that would be, for, for our association and for me personally, this would be uh, an, an ideal model and we also uh, had a, a chance to hear about a school in London which uh, works that way and everything is going on really good. So um, I didn't want to bother you with, the, with the, uh, so much with the with articles, I'm, so I'm sure you know about them and I wanted really to stress that um, really, uh, especially that ob obligation of the state to raise awareness of the of the human rights of persons with disabilities and the children included
Thank, Thank you. you very much. It's, I think, a very important point because uh, the, the article 42 of the CRC comes to my mind where it says that it is the obligation of the state to kind of disseminate the idea of children's rights so the two of it can a little bit be connected. And if you allow me just to catch the audience attention, I will do, it's maybe not a representative uh, survey at this moment, but can you just raise your hand who at high school had a, an experience with a training on children's rights or on disability rights? That's what I always do in university classes and there are very few people raising their hands. So who, who did have in high school education? You did, perfect. So you're the one, you're the, you're the second, perfect. And, yeah. If I just might if I just yeah. add, uh, within the, this organization, our association, we have uh, uh, organized um, uh, lectures for students at the mm -hmm. universities on the rights of persons with with the, with, the, with the disabilities. So I think this could be one of the uh, one of the. But this is uh, mm -hmm. an, an NGO organizing uh, such events. But uh, 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 awareness raising campaigns mm -hmm. can, could can, could come in different forms. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know whether our other panelists will move on to. The next, uh, uh, our next question. So at the beginning, I mentioned that uh, the childhood of uh, children with disabilities are more endangered than those of childhood who live without a disability. And we have a great expert here, Professor Boazek Mietiak. I will ask you uh, about the abuse. So we mentioned that uh, children with disability are more vulnerable and they uh, are abused more often. Could you please give us some reflection on that and also what do you think their, their uh, protection, how it can be more effective? Well, uh, like, like Dr. Marta said, uh, I am not only a professor of medical university but also I am a member of the uh, National State Commission of Prevention of Pedophilia. And I believe it was two years ago, I, uh, I was sharing with my friends in commission the topic of the um, children with disability because like, like you, you heard, this is a topic, topic that is very important for me. And uh, I was at this time uh, the chief, the president of this commission. And I, I was starting to analyze the situation of statistic, how many children in our statistic are with the children with disability. And this was amazing for me because uh, we sent a question also to the Ministry of Family in Poland, to the Ombudsman of Patients' Rights, and there are no, no children in our statistic that formally have, uh, there are only few children with disability, the mental disability, the intellectual disability. For instance, there was uh, children with, with autism or uh, Asperger syndrome. But there was only a few children. But we know from the uh, analyze uh, scientists in, in, for instance, also the World Health, or World Health Organization and, and uh, NGOs that are focused on the problem of children with disability, that if you are a child with disability, uh, the girl, but also the boy, if you have, for instance, like I told you, autism syndrome, that there is a higher, four, four to five higher dangerous that you will be a children that probably can be abused by the, for instance, sexual violence. We know this, this was analyzed by the criminologists, psychologists, that uh, if you are a person with disability, there is, we see the increase of dangerous to be a, a victim of the, that form of, of, uh, of violence. And we do uh, this, the paradox and tragic element of the situation that we do not see these children in our statistic, not because I was blind, <laughs> but we do not see these children. There are no children in the statistic. And we ask, for instance, I, I sent my letter, my document to my friend who is a, a ministry that is dedicated to the people with disability, Minister Pavel Dovik. He's a person, he, he do not see anything. He's got a great dog. He walk with this dog everywhere, to the president also. And, uh, and I ask, ask him, is there in office, if, in his office, some statistic about these children? Nothing. So in our commission, we create a debate of the protection of the ch children with disability um, uh, from the dangers of, of, of being a victim of ab sexual abuse. We were talking with Polish, Polish 
psychologists, pedagogists, criminologists, and you see the, 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 the sadness information was that Polish media wasn't interested of this topic. It was too horrible, I believe, for them. I don't know. There was no interesting of this topic. We were talking why we don't hear the voice of children with disability. I remember one case of a young boy. He was a person with uh, intellectual disability, and he was also, he couldn't speak. Uh, he was, there, there was a, probably a problem with autistic syndrome, and he was abused by the teacher. Uh, and I heard him, his voice. He couldn't speak in Polish language. This was only hur, hur, hur. Only his mother understood what he's speaking. And you see, this voice was amazing. The amazing voice of pain of young boy that was abused. Nobody understood him. And I know that this is horrible topic, sad topic, uh, difficult to imagine this, the, the, the level of, of pain. You ask me, Marta, what, what is the form of prevention? Well, uh, the knowledge. The, uh, the knowledge. We, we need to try to find out the contact to communicate with people, with children with disability. For instance, uh, like I two times told you this, the, the children with autistic syndrome, there are lots of alternative form of communication, great alternative form of pictograms, for instance. We, we, we can go inside the world of mind of people with autism. We, we need to observe. I, I remember I told you when, when my mother was working with, with children with very deep level of intellectual disability, there was a, a young girl, she, she couldn't talk. I don't know, probably she was hearing my voice. But uh, being with these children give us opportunity to know his language. We know that sometimes this language is a silence. But if we find out the different form of behaviors, we can find the element of syndrome that, for instance, this child was, uh, for instance, raped. Uh, because we need to know these children. The form of prevention uh, is to be with the children, to, to, to know his word, uh, to, to know his perspective. Because I know this with children with disability, sometimes this is difficult. I know, I understand this. But if we do not know the word, the specific word of children with specific form of disability, the prevention is, is uh, we cannot do anything. It's, so for me, being with children, knowing his word, uh, this is the basic element of prevention of being a victim of, of not only the children with, with disability. This is the, the general idea. Because I am a father, I love my children, and uh, one of the guys, a horrible person, he, he, he was a pedophile, and he, he asked one question. Do you know what kind of music is listening your, is listening your daughter? What is the prefer, I don't know, by her uh, music? If you do not know the most important for her music, this is for me a signal that it can be a victim of mine. So I, my obligation as a father is to being a part of words of my daughter. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much. I think it's so important what you mentioned because we even have struggles with our healthy kids. And if we're talking about disability, it's really, really a hard uh, topic. And, but we really need to engage, even if it is hard, not to keep it distant from ourselves. <laughs> In the beginning, it popped up that how family is important, how the support of parents is important in order to have these children safe. And I think in the getting to know these children, it is also important to keep them safe. Uh, and uh, part of it is the social security system. It is also a very important element of the child rights-based approach. And now I turn to Professor uh, Nora Jakab to please reflect a bit on the child-sensitive social security system. What do you think are the elements of, uh, of a system like that? How we can help children and their families Thank you so much. Thank you. I would like to be short, and I would like to reflect to your 
uh, saying because uh, what Professor Niechak <laughs> um, uh, was saying uh, has been long debated, I think. Uh, I don't know whether you have heard about supported decision making. So uh, people, let it be a child, let it be an adult, uh, with disability need uh, many times support uh, in expressing himself, herself, themselves. And supported decision making is one very important element of the UN Convention uh, on Disabled People and on the rights of disabled people. And we have got good examples from Canada, but it's Canada. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, everything has a Central European reality. Uh, and this is our rea reality as well, that assistive technology and assistive, uh, assisting people are really needed for them. And to go to your question, uh, what does it mean to have a child-sensitive social protection system or social security? It is not the same. Um, when I started to deal with the right to social security, of children with a disability, then it was my main question, what I am going to find in the literature, in the practice. And it was very short that I could find, because I don't know who deals with social security at your age, for example, I didn't care about that. But as I'm over 40 now, I really feel that it's very important if I am in a difficult life situation, it can be also having a child, then I need support uh, in, from the state because I expect that. And this support can be service, can be in kind, and of course, um, with the age, you form the right to have security and to have protection. And when you are a child with disability, then I think it is much more important. And to be child sensitive, we find some elements uh, on social protection system. And of course, what it is about, it is about the full support of the families and of the caregivers. Because children are dependent, so it is a very important responsibility of the state to, um, to, to provide support uh, for those who give care to the children. The problem is when we have got a child with disability in an institution. And that's another question. That's a very important question, actually, how they are deprived from family, etc. But maybe we want to go into this in detail now, just I will uh, reflect, would like to reflect uh, on one uh, element of this child rights approach, it's the right to life of a child with disability, and now I will turn to Professor Lise to share with us the, the, the thoughts and the views of the Polish Constitutional Court in this regard. Yes, maybe uh, through the, uh, through the uh, idea uh, and what uh, Polish uh, Constitutional Tribunal uh, said about it, uh, because it's uh, very uh, important. Uh, uh, Polish uh, Constitutional uh, Tribunal uh, have an obligation uh, to protect uh, human uh, life and health uh, at every uh, stage uh, of human development, including uh, of, uh, of a stage of a prenatal uh, life. Uh, there are no uh, sufficiently uh, precise and uh, convincing uh, criteria uh, to differentiate uh, human life uh, according uh, to uh, its stage. Uh, it follows uh, that human life is a, a value uh, to be uh, protected from the uh, moment of its uh, uh, inception. Uh, 
uh, the uh, Polish uh, Constitutional uh, Tribunal uh, upholds uh, the protection of the uh, right to life, uh, considering it to uh, be a primary uh, uh, right vis-à-vis -vis, uh, the state. Uh, if any uh, problems uh, of uh, interpretation um, arise, uh, the uh, principle uh, of uh, in uh, uh, dubio pro vita humana should be uh, applied and uh, so act to protect uh, human uh, life. Uh, this uh, position uh, resonated particularly strongly in two uh, orders uh, in 1997 and uh, 22, uh, which is uh, connected uh, to uh, abortion. So uh, we in our uh, country, uh, we have a uh, guarantee uh, in Polish constitution and uh, in, uh, in the um, tribunal, uh, constitutional tribunal uh, position, uh, which, uh, which is uh, try to uh, save uh, the life uh, without, uh, without uh, any stage. Uh, uh, of uh, of life. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. I think uh, we all reflected on some very important topics uh, in terms of the production of the rights of uh, children with disabilities. I mean, one hour is uh, is really short, but I don't want to miss uh, our last question because I think it's. Uh, it's actually very important, and for me, it's the, the most important part of it because we are here to kind of really reflect and uh, give out to, to, to show our view what we would do in practice to really change the life of these children. So this is the aim of this whole conference: to to reach them. You so, you see the drawings, etc., to bring their voices here, to have them actually here with me. So I will just turn to you and ask you. We wanted to say two, but if you just said one thing that pops up into your mind and you would change in short term or in long term that you think would change the life of children with disability or would actually improve the, this kind of social construct that is, uh, is behind, the, behind the scene, but we see them through their childhood. Any, any one of you want to... <laughs> start. I think we should. I think we should start. Uh, I would start with education and education, especially of uh, future experts, of the experts that work with children. Uh, you mean, I mean, teachers, uh, doctors, judges, whoever works with the, with children right now, and also future experts, future teachers, future lawyers, judges, wh whoever. And I think they should uh, all learn about uh, the rights of children and also about the rights of uh, the privileged uh, groups, including children with special needs. For instance, when I work at the court, at the family department with children, I also uh, um, uh, meet children with special needs. And when you do that, you have uh, you have an opportunity. Then you need the, the knowledge. If you don't about children with special needs, and if you don't have such a knowledge, uh, then then it's uh, the, the, then uh, a possibility that you would uh, um, treat them the right way is lesser uh, than if you have if you had a knowledge in that field. So I think it's an important uh, uh, part of uh, of the. Um, process of um, recognizing the rights of uh, children, uh, actually uh, re recognizing the rights of children with special needs in our societies. Thank you very much. Judge Murgal, any of you? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> in small, uh, I think uh, we should help one person um, because this is the miracle uh, of our daily life and in big I would talk to the Prime Minister that disability policy is very important. I'm sorry, I think that's the beginning. I think very, what you said is so important because the child rights perspective says that 
if a child is traumatized and there is only one adult person that turns to them with sensitivity and with care, it can absolutely change their lives. So I think it's so important what you said. Thank you. Well, I've got uh, the, the f f f f picture in important for me. I told you that uh, for me it's important to hear the voice of children with disability. I know this is ide idealistic and, and something like this. But I remember one, one situation uh, together with my family, with my wife. She, she, my wife is therapist of people with uh, autistic syndrome. We were on, on the holidays and came to us family. They adopt a boy, amazing boy. Uh, with very huge level of disability, he cannot walk, he cannot move, he can see, hear anything. We only hear his voice. He's, he's mostly laughing. And this was amazing for me because he's got, at this moment, I believe, eight years old. And my wife uh, came to him and started to touch him in a funny way. And his smile, his laughing was so amazing. And I know that this is idealistic for, for his parents night, days, are very difficult. I know this is not some family film, some family movie, but for me, hearing the voice gives us the opportunity not to be afraid of people with disability. When I was a young boy, uh, uh, Marta told this, I was, um, I, I've got problem with my eyes. In fact, in documents, I'm still a blind person, and uh, lots of teachers was afraid of me. They haven't got idea how to speak with me, how to help me. And when we see, for instance, people with mental disability or intellectual disability, we often afraid of this group of people. Being with them, changing us. I know priests that are working with people with disability. These are the best priests that I've ever known. So don't be afraid, people with disability. Spend with them sometimes. It's make us the better person. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, I uh, can join uh, and agree uh, with a uh, professor from Slovenia uh, that uh, education uh, makes uh, it possible uh, to break down prejudices and uh, lead to uh, the creation of a space of uh, solid solidarity uh, with those who need uh, help, uh, especially uh, people with uh, disability uh, who uh, need acceptance and support, especially from, uh, from their parents and from, uh, from adults in general. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all your inputs. <laughs>